didn't go to art school, can't afford or don't know where there are local figure drawing classes, well, here's how you can come as close as possible to that without leaving your home. Better yet, here's why doing two and five minute poses, learning to gesture draw is vitally important to your growth as an artist. So I have been looking at a lot of younger and or less experienced artists work lately uh, because I've been looking for an artist to help launch my next intellectual property. And in seeing lots of other people's art, uh, I have seen a couple of things become abundantly clear to me. And I wanted to start making a series of videos that would address those issues. But I also have been wanting to get back to this habit for a while now. And so it's sort of killing two birds with one stone. It's a good habit for myself. And I'm hoping other people will see this and understand what a good habit it is for them to get into themselves. A lot of <clears throat> self-taught artists, uh, or even artists that went to art school and are no longer in art school, and therefore no longer go to figure drawing classes, uh, or maybe never under really never understood the real importance of figure drawing classes in art school. Or maybe the art school they went to, the teachers only had them do long poses and never really did short poses. Uh, so they never really learned the value of good gesture drawings. So I am going to try to explain the power of gesture drawings, why they're so important, and show you how you can get as close as possible to actually being in a figure drawing class doing two and five minute poses uh, here at home. Um, so there's really two main topics of discussion. First one is that lines are your choice for how to problem solve or how to solve problems. Interpreting three, interpreting three dimensions into two. And two, that you need to think of the body as one fluid form. And that's the entire basis for gesture drawing. And those two go together because the choices you make when drawing, whether it's from looking at a model or from your head when drawing comics, which, by the way, you shouldn't be drawing all your comics from your head. Uh, looking at reference is not a sin. <laughs> uh, maybe relying 100% on reference is a sin. You should definitely be able to still work without reference, but, <clears throat> and you should not have to trace reference, but reference is your friend. Reference has always been and will always be the illustrator's friend. Anyway, your line choices should play into the idea that the body is one fluid form. Uh, when I see so many of these different artists work, I see pieces and parts uh, put together. I see arm muscles and leg muscles and chest muscles. And their figure work looks like a bunch, a bunch of pieces and parts stuck together. Uh, it doesn't feel like 
there's any sense of fluidity to the form. It doesn't feel like um, that the pieces are attached to a skeleton that moves. There's no stretch. There's no squash and stretch. There's, you know, there's a lot of things that animators learn that comic book artists don't learn that I really think should be fundamental to what comic book artists learn. Uh, if you were to get the Animator's Toolkit, which is a fantastic book, um, it talks us a lot about squash and stretch. Uh, it talks about, um, uh, you know, for instance, let's see here. Let me, so if you have a, if you have a ball and the ball hits the surface, that ball, before it bounces, it compresses, the air inside of it compresses, the soft shape of the ball compresses, and then when it bounces up off the ground, it stretches it doesn't always just stay a circle. Squash and stretch. Animators often learn when animating that you should be able to animate a bag of flour. You know, there's a bag of bag of flowers, not just a rectangle. It's a it's got it's got um you know, it's it's full of flour, right? So so it's got it's got form. Um <clears throat> it, it's full of stuff. So you should be able to you should be able to tell a story with nothing but that bag of flour. You should you, it should be able to uh it should be able to feel like it's you know, jumping for joy or, 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 um, leaning over in sadness. Uh, you, you should be able to, to emote and act thoroughly with this bag of flour. You know, you should be able to make it, you should be able to, um, make that bag of flour feel like see even I don't have this right <laughs> you should be able to make that bag of flour feel like it's well it should be like this All right get back to my drawing tool should make the bag of flour be able to feel like it's, you know, running for its... Ah, come on. You should make that bag of flour be able to uh, 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 feel like it's, you know, running for its life or, or whatever you need it to do. Um, <laughs> this would obviously take a little more practice. I, I'm, I'm, you know, working on the cuff here. But, you know, you, you should be able to get... Um, twist of of the torso and and um like this he, he's not really running because his his weight is over his his legs really here which is when he's running it should really feel you know his leg should be stretching out and that one should be pushed back but his weight should be off center so really should be stretching stretching so his weight should definitely be off center, you know, and that leg should be pushed, pulled forward, and whatever. So, so you get the idea. You really feel the stretch more now. But you should be to do. You should be able to emote, um, maybe not with a face, but 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 
you should be able to do everything uh, acting and action wise with a bag of flour that you can do with a, a figure you know and that's all with stretching and squashing and stretching and pulling and twisting and and doing everything with this bag of flour that you would do with a human figure and it's all through the power of gesture drawing it's all through understanding what you can do with this simple shape and this simple form so i wanted to take a few minutes before i really get into gesture drawing itself and show you um some of the best artists in the history of comics and how their work uh plays into plays into these things and follows these rules i'm starting with john paul leone because he's such a great example of how choosing your lines is problem solving you know when you pick lines you are you're deciding okay this is how i'm going to draw an eye or this is how i'm going to draw a nose or i'm going to draw a mouth and so you can look at you can look at anything like this and and you can you know you 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 could get in here and you can go okay so he decided to do this is not the right tool for this i need to be a little more exact oh that is definitely not the right tool huh all right let's get simple and make sure you're okay so you know he did this and this this is black space right in the mouth he's leaving white there to represent teeth and it drops off because jp was a master at negativity at letting blacks drop into blacks and whites drop into whites and leaving your brain to infer and fill in the rest. You know, uh, he was a master at simplicity like that. At same thing, you know, bare minimum. Didn't you, you know, the mouth doesn't go all the way across, it stops. And then this is the corner where this, you get a dark region where the smile is, and, and that's it. Um, Darker uniform, so there's good black spotting in the uniform. Uh, minimalistic about where he, you know, chooses to add blacks, right? Just a little bit of white in there. Keeps it simple, keeps it heavy. John, JP was great at... Uh, heavy with blacks anyway um you know jp was great also with form he uses blacks to define form so in a background like this basically every flat surface that faces the camera goes black every surface that faces towards the ground goes black. You know, it makes simple decisions like that and then makes his job simple. Okay, so all these surfaces that face the camera with a little bit of texturing, of course, uh, black. The bot, you know, all the bottoms here, right, that all face towards the ground, black. All the surfaces here, there's texturing in there, whatever, black, black, black. That might be an exception to the rule right there. Come on. Um, and there's always exceptions to the rule, but the basic idea is, right, all these surfaces that face the camera are faced towards the, the ground, black. Same for here. All this stuff, right? 
and it provides such a wonderful outline for the face here. Just magnificent. Just masterful. So masterful. Doesn't have to draw an outline and then a space around it. Just just masterful black black right on white. And then he and then and then he comes in same concept about uh, surfaces facing towards us and surfaces facing down. He holds to that same concept, except there's curvature in, in you know, a rounded human skull. But same idea. Um, he leaves some of this, you know, he could have gone all in with all that, but he doesn't. Uh, he keeps it mostly to the under the, you know, where the cheekbone goes in underneath. Gets here. But a lot of times there's, you know, this basic under and front means the light's going to be coming from this kind of direction, which is most likely why he, he goes a little bit more realistic and leaves, you know, areas like this not black. So... There's so much uh, conscientious choice in all this work that he makes look so simple and bold. But, man, he knows exactly what he's doing, always. Uh, same here. It's all about your choices you make and keeping it simple. JP always knew exactly how to keep complicated things he knew when to get more detailed and he knew when to keep it simple Rachel's face you know it keeps it <laughs> I hate this blue color it's hard to see let's do that he keeps it so simple, you know, here. F female face. It's always good to keep simple. Right? So many people would say, don't do this. Don't do, don't do bags under a female's eyes. But she's stressed out. She's tired. That's her character in the film. She's struggling with, you know, being a replicant. And JP, you know, adds that to her face, and it works. It works great. It it's she, you can see, she still looks beautiful. But you can he brings that through that stress through, there by you know, having that harshness, there. <laughs> Big giant uh, Harrison Ford face. More gray tones, more textures in the shadow areas. S same thing over here where it keeps things so s stark with black and white. And yet there's, there's a lot of detail, you know, like in all these. Uh, wait, what? Oh. You know, all the wood panels. Just leaving spaces in between some adds so much uh, texture with not too much effort. So, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Mm. I should have prepared more for this. You look at Jose Luis Garcia Lopez. Let's get more into gesture drawing. When you look at Jose Luis Garcia Lopez, even with him doing the style guide for DC Comics and therefore doing muscular figures, it's still so obvious to see the, the gesture drawings. In the figures, you can see the very simple 
you can see the line of action even in the side view here. And you can see how... You can see the fluidity in the figures. And the muscles just don't look like... It's more muscular than some of the stuff he does. And they do look a little part and piece. But you can still see... You can still see... You can see the line of the chest coming down the middle. And then you can see this half of the torso disappearing into the other half of the torso because there's a twist to the torso. You know, the, because of the running, the torso twists around this way a little bit. And, and that means this arm is coming back around this way too, while this arm is curling back around that way. And then while the bottom torso, you know, this leg, this leg is forward, so the bottom torso is twisting this way. And the bottom half comes around that way. You know, you see muscles here on Superman, but it's still part of one fluid arm, and he keeps it simple as he can, and then adds the parts to show you the muscles as necessary. Same here. Same with uh, same with Green Arrow. You got the curve. That one. That. Curve shows you everything you need to know about the tricep. Same with the bicep. There's so much information in that curve. You can keep it simple. And, you know, simple line tells you, informs you of everything. You don't need a hundred lines to show you a bunch of information. The the simple lines that are there are incredibly informative. The the simpler you are, the more correct your lines have to be. Uh, but still, you can see if you draw a line down the center of the torso, right, and then and you've got the other half, and then this, you know, that is. It's very easy to find the gesture drawing. And then you see, it's so easy to find the gesture drawings uh, in these figures. It's so easy to find the line of action. Come right down the middle of the figure there, and then you can see how that carries right on down. That's your line of action in a gesture drawing, which I know I haven't gotten to yet, but we will get to. And then this comes down, and then curves back around that way. And this is all and you're and now when I talk about lines indicating the that the your line choices indicate that the body is one fluid uh unit you see right here like his lines all are flowing into the form. That's what I'm talking about. Here it's all like they all function, they all help it all put together. They all come together to make it one. They all flow into one another in the correct directions to help the body feel like one fluid unit, which it is. Same there. Um, he really masters it with, with the female form, you know. The most simple of all. Again, your, your, uh, your line of action. And then it continues down for her leg. Here's your line of action, right? And there's there's that arm. Other arm coming off, and then you, you you know you building out the torso. There's the other side of that torso.
Here you go. You're seeing the back here. The front comes down and then there's, there it is again. Same. This one's great. The line of action comes down here. So then, you know, if, if we're looking at the, the, the torso here, you got, there's where your head would connect. You got a great twist here. So you got your, shul your shoulder line is up like this. And then the uh, bottom of the torso where the waist is, is way like that. So, you know, if you were to kind of draw your ab, th this is where the upper part of the torso where the rib cage is, is rigid, that can't move. So all the torso twist has to take between, has to happen between the pelvic bone down here and the rib cage. So that all, all that twist is happening right here around the middle. Then you got that great stretch with that arm coming forward and then that shoulder going back. And so, you know, when I talk about that squash and stretch, this, even though technically that rib cage unit seems like it can't move, it does. You know, the clavicle moves in there. It's made to be able to move. It slides around. The muscles and the, the bones in the upper back move and slide around. So even though the rib cage doesn't move, the the arm slides around on that so so you can get you know uh it can stretch and it does slide so the shoulders slide around on that torso you know so you have this torso here and the shoulders can slide forward here or they can be here or they can be back here you know same over here and then you can twist that torso so you can make the torso like this and then shoulders coming forward and back. So you can get, there's so much range of movement here. So you should never think of that as, I see so many artists making this stuff so rigid. You can't think of it as rigid. You have to think of that sack of flour, you know? Here, this, is, this is exactly that sack of flour that I talked about. So that sack of flour could be reaching up. Could be stretching, stretching, reaching for something. So, uh, more, more examples. Um, keep wanting to make my lines smaller. I mean, you know, these guys, th these guys, all the guys I'm going to show you, the one consistency about them is that they are simple. They don't add a, a, a hundred lines where ten lines will do, you know? They, they add just enough lines, and each line has a very specific meaning. And you, and you can find the gesture drawing... in every single one of them. And then, you know, the hip bone comes out, and then... And you can believe that these uh, guys probably shot reference of their wife or their uh, friends or whatever for so many of these uh, shots. Same here. This is so great. I mean, look at this. So, so we get to the top of the torso here, and that's where the arm would come out. And then you have the rib cage, and then it comes in. So you're going to have the end of the top of the torso. But there's a twist, right? So, so torso twist. 
right? So then uh, for the pelvic area, and then So if you're using like cylinders to co to construct your figure, there it is, and then that arm comes out of you know it where it's supposed to, and then. You can always find These guys are always simple and to the point, and like I said, you can always find the gesture drawing in the figures. Shoulders are, you can see the shoulders are raised here a little bit, so that, you know, you can, you got this line here Same here, you got your middle line, you got torso twist here. So, so the bottom part of the torso is pretty much in line this way, so we're seeing a straight side view. Yeah, and the top of the torso twists, so we're seeing it like this. So, but the uh, arm is coming forward here. So this is where the hole, where the, uh, the part of the torso where the arm would come out of. The arm is moving forward. So the shoulder is, so the, the bone, the, oh, I forget what you call this, that um, sliding bone on the back there would be, moved over up here rather than further back and then the shoulder muscle is moved forward so that part where it starts is back here and then whoop so if you got form and we add you know form cylinders here circles same deal. And of course, this leg comes right out where it's supposed to. Also, um, a thing I see all the time with some of these other artists uh, the younger guys, I see people that have no idea how clothes behave. That is a great place where reference comes in handy. You know, um, drawing from models for four years in art school and having them be clothed a lot of the times helps you learn how cloth behaves. And shooting reference of yourself, you know, even if you don't trace it, you you get to see and understand how cloth behaves, and you don't like I said, you don't have to trace it, but you can see, and then you'll start to get an idea for what 
fabric does when it bends. You know, jackets, dinner jackets, always have padding up here in the shoulder. So then when it comes off your shoulders, it always dips like this before there's any wrinkles. And then there's a whole bunch of wrinkles. And then it gets out here. And, and then it always comes straight off the bottom like this. This is a person who either shot reference or has drawn from real life so much that he knows how the fabric behaves. If you know how fabric behaves, then you can draw convincing looking fabric. Same, same here. Um, he's got the, the, that's actually the sewing on the fabric, which affects how fabric wrinkles. Fabric really doesn't wrinkle that often where the fabric is sewn. And realistically, the wrinkles are coming off of, you know, where the fabric is. And then she's got her sleeves uh, folded up, right? Come here, and then, sure enough, comes off the fold there like that. Also... Uh, from a gesture drawing, you got the, you got, uh, she's got her arm. And then the torso is, it's an odd angle, but, um, it's like an up angle at the upper torso. You get the idea. Wonderful. Even this one. Even this. It's great. The, the torso. There's your line of action. And this is great because uh, the shoulder is up here because she's putting her weight on it. So you can tell that this arm is bearing weight. Even when it's hidden behind clothes. And then you can see how the rest of the torso slumping over like this and curling around but it all seems like one you know one unit one fluid unit it all works and flows together I'm sticking with uh, Jose Luis Garcia Lopez for a little longer here But I'll try to, I'll try to, well, I mean, I could stick with this. All right, fine. I'll, I'll, I'll move forward. I'll keep going. Alan Davis has always been one of my favorite artists, but same deal, right? Same, same deal. Um, come on. Same deal. He's always done, he's great with the muscles and everything, but you can tell. Even with this, uh, let me uh, lower opacity on that, right? Same deal. Here's your line of action in the gesture drawing. There's your, there's your shoulder line where your head connects. Shoulder line, well, waistline, chest line is still more or less with the shoulder line because that's, you know, rigid and you get all that twist taking place below the ribs. And then it flows back with this leg. It's going back in space. Out and the, out and in and then out and in. And then this one. Coming forward, right? This arm coming forward, that arm. And then, like, 
this leg is coming forward, so this arm is most likely going to be coming forward. And sure enough, there it is. And the chest attaches nicely to the shoulder, which attaches nicely to the tricep and the bicep. And then has a smooth fluid attachment to the lower arm. Same, same with the woman. It's so easy to see the gesture, the gesture drawing. There's your line of action. So we got the upper torso. And the line of action follows this back leg around. And then he's got this front leg coming out that goes in front of the line of action in this case. But again, his line choices are all you can see the musculature very simply, but the line choices are all aimed towards keeping the body, remembering the body as one fluid element. Yeah? See? It's not a bunch of pieces and parts put together. It's one fluid unit. He hints at all the pieces and parts as necessary, giving them the detail they need. And nothing more. He doesn't finish those lines because he doesn't want them interfering with the hand that's coming in here. Down we go. Same deal here. You got the hint of, you know, leg coming in there. But it doesn't have any more than necessary. Everything's not broken up into little bits and pieces. It all flows together. Same with her. It's so elegant. Even with Wolverine which there's more detail on, but it's still, it's still, you know, chest. All right, so he's got some uh, hard bit of, you know, uniform on there. But even if, even if, even if you saw the shoulder under there, you got his chest. Then we all know how he draws Then his, then his arms coming out from there, tricep. There's a big old bulging bicep, a little bit of a vein there, right? It flows together. Flow, 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 flow. Flow. This gives you an indication of form. Sense of depth, form, three dimension. Same here. Tricep gives you some indication of bicep here. This is a muscle that comes out from under the bicep there. And then your chest muscle. 
which actually, I don't know what's going on here. The armor gets in the way, but your bicep's going to be coming here. And then, stupid eraser. Over, wee! Yeah, there's your chest, and then sh shoulders, deltoids. Lower arm. It all flows together nicely. Ugh. I wish I'd chosen this overlay color earlier. Anyway, uh, <laughs> sketch cover. Same deal. Center line. I think his figures are getting a little elongated on the sketch cover. <laughs> Chest line. <sighs> yeah, right, so, John Buscema, John Buscema is the king of the gesture drawing. I mean the king. Same deal. Adds, you know, adds what he needs. There's your uh, elbow, right? And there's your forearm cutting underneath the other arm. Some bicep going in there. And then there's a big old hunky tricep. Maybe your other part of the tricep there. And then, and then shoulder. But you see how simple he keeps it? Same deal here. Here's this whole uh, forearm getting in the way of you seeing the upper arm, that other. But there's this chest coming on right on down. I mean, man, same as this Ernie Channings. Definitely got some forward leaning action on that uh, torso there, right? So, do 
at least one more. I mean, I could spend a whole day just going over uh Oh man. Look at the twist on that torso. That's so great. Look at this line of action. Oh boy. What a treat. Look at that. So that would be like your chest line. There's your like, clavicle, basically. And then look at all that twist taking place. And then there's your... So look how radically different that shoulder line is from the waistline. And we've got that chest almost facing us like this. Oh, and then that radical twist so that the hips are almost a side view to us. And even then, there's a twist in the legs so that the... Uh, Foot is facing away from us again. And then that arm is uh, coming across the torso. And that, sh and that shoulder is going radically away from us. So much dynamic movement in this pose. One arm coming at us dramatically, that arm going dramatically away from us. That huge torso twist. Torso twist is everything. His legs seem so short in this pose. Like, why is that upper leg so short? Maybe if it were going away from us, it would seem short. And if this were coming at us more, it might... Make it so that that was that short. <laughs> you start to see imperfections and amazing drawings when you break it down like that. Same here. Okay, so here we go again. Another. There's some twists going on in that torso, right? So, because we got a side view of the torso here. But then by the time it gets down here, it's like. And it stays, stays a side view. Got a shoulder up. But then... So the upper arm is kind of coming at us a little bit. Then there's the elbow and then the forearm's going away. Same deal here. Upper arm's going out that way. Oh, but then the, uh, this arm it's coming almost straight up, I guess. Yep. When you're doing a gesture drawing, you know, in your first pass, really, you're just trying to get the The idea down you don't need to be getting muscles and all that kind of stuff later on when you go back you can add muscles you know you can add that you can add all the details you want on top of that getting the underdrawing first is what matters that's what makes a difference 
getting your foundation first is what makes a difference. Get the get the simple stuff right first, you know. Same here. How big is this? Pen? Oh, okay. Get the detail get the details right. Then once you know you've got your foundation right, then Then you can start adding, you know. Then you could start adding. Come on. Then you can start adding details that matter. John Busima, Stuart Imon and same deal. Simplicity. Such simplicity. Every line matters. Every line is important. Every line tells you so much about form. Tells you... Oh. So much about... Um, you know, tells you... hard to talk if I'm not and point at things but you can't see what I'm pointing to <laughs> so you know ribs pelvic bone muscles thigh muscles and exactly how much thigh muscles, knee, same thigh muscles, and then coming back out again, that you're going into the butt muscles, same deal, lats, come down between the rib cage and the pelvic bone, coming back out for the pelvic bone, and your butt. Same deal. So this is where you come in. This is the small area between the bottom bottom of your bicep here and your forearm muscles start. That's what that is. And we come back out just a little bit for your bicep. Back up. Same deal. Bottom of the shoulder. Curve right back out just a little bit for your tricep. In and then coming back out for the forearm muscles. Same. Forearm, I'm come just a slight curve to indicate that's the bicep. We're up here in the shoulder. Her shoulders are up a little bit. You can tell by just the, the line work that her shoulders are a little up. On both sides, you can see that. Also, the lines of the uniform. The lines of the uniform are informative. They're not just willy-nilly lines. Those lines are indicating form. They're indicating size and shape of the breast. Both sides. Same here. Same here. All of those things. This indicates rib cage, flatness of stomach. Same here. All of it. 
Same with all this. Same with same with exactly what I did before for the tricep, bicep. That's the crux area between forearm muscles and the upper arm muscles. Even here, look, this is the big muscle. So, so the knee, right? Right here. That's the big muscle on the inside. And there's a smaller one here on the outside. And then there's the long muscle here. And then this is where that line comes up that you see. And then there's the muscles that come up on the inner thigh. And he's, all the information is there just by what he's drawn right there. See, if I get rid of all of this, then I just draw this. There's beside the knee, and there's that muscle. Now we go like that, and then there's the inside of the thigh right there. Same here, beside the knee. And then this comes, there's the big muscles on the outside of the thigh. Coming down from the... <sighs> yeah. It's all there. Same deal. So simple, but so informative. <laughs> Olivier Coipo, or however he pronounces his name. I don't want to not do justice to it. Same dealio. These gesture drawings are so, again, so easy to find. Just your first. Except this one's coming at us. Yeah, just like this arm is shoulder, bicep, and then
even with all the detail he draws, the gestures are always there, They're easy to see. The body is one fluid unit. And the line choices are always working in conjunction with one another, even here, seeing the three-dimensionality of the, the chest going into the shoulder muscles and then into the bicep here. There's the elbow. And then you see the horseshoe shape of the triceps and then that's the back muscles the lats it's all there rib underneath the rib cage. Look at that. Form, form, form. All flowing together correctly to make one beautifully solid, beautifully correct amazing figure and all the lines working in conjunction with one another to make the body feel like one amazingly beautiful wonderful form And then great line choices. That's what I'm talking about. This is the line choices working together to make the form look like one fluid unit. So that is what I want gesture drawing exercises to help. That's what they help you understand. That's what they help you think about. That's what they help you understand as a concept. Whoops. And once you start to understand and see the body and be able to break it down into simple forms like this, Uh, rib cage, whoop. Abs. Deltoids.
Now, if anybody follows uh, Olivier on his social media sites, you know that he takes figure drawing classes all the time. And it shows in his work. So, yep. Yep. Um, Now, sometimes you don't get, like, a huge swing from, like, this to this, you know, in a, a, in a torso. Sometimes the swing you get is from a curve over like that to a curve under like this, which means that you are getting... right you're getting that like you see in this so anyway oh I wanted to point out when he shares his work on social media you can actually see in his gesture drawings like the one on the left here right you can actually see it you can actually see him working it out you know and you can see in the gesture drawing the simplicity and uh actually um uh boop, 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 boop. you can actually see if you look closely you can see him drawing the center line of the figure, you know, to get to get the movement on that. You could see uh, where he was kind of working out. You know, once you've done a ton of uh, figure drawing stuff, you can start to um, skip some of the stuff. Like, you know, a lot of times you still have to sit here and do a lot of this stuff still. To build your figures. And then as you get good enough... over time not so much you start to be able to do this in your head and once you can do this in your head well when you can start to skip a lot of these steps and do it in your head you're really off to the races so like in this one this is this is the leg that's coming forward So that leg's going back.
Anyway, yeah. Oh, I was going to spend a whole bunch of time on Adam Hughes because he's my favorite of them all, but I've already wasted a ton of time. But Adam, like the rest, um, is a master of simplicity who, you know, again, you can pick the gesture drawings out pretty simply. He keeps things simple. He keeps things fluid. All the lines work in keeping the body looking like a fluid figure, uh, you know. Oh, okay, I'll spend two, a couple minutes just working on this, and then I'll end this video, and then in the next one, we'll actually, I'll actually start to do some gesture drawings. But I wanted to point this out, because in his, uh, when Adam shares, uh, or when other people buy his sketchbooks or whatever, and then you see some of his preliminary drawings, or little sketches, sometimes you really can see uh, the work. You can see in his preliminary drawings, like you can see, like here, you can, like this seems like ridiculous, like, well, that looks like a wobbly leg, but that is, that's the line of action. His gesture drawing, it's, it's right there. You know, if he were to develop this further, you know, there'd be... Actually, the leg. Let me get rid of this, right? So, so there'd be you know leg with a muscle and then a knee, and then shin. Right, and then. So you even indicate where there was an ankle, and then there was, you know, a foot. And there'd be a there'd be a sh shin. I mean, there'd be a calf, back here. muscle, but, you know, so, I mean, there would be a proper leg, but you're actually seeing the gesture drawing. You're actually seeing that this is so simple, but he's just laying down the gesture drawing. You know, you go in. You know. You build on top of that gesture drawing and you know before you know it there's like there's a real there's a real figure there with accurate muscles and everything but it starts with that simplicity uh, it was the same thing in here this that's probably the line that started this drawing it ends up not being that pertinent to the drawing but that starts the left part of the upper torso, you know, and then this, and then this becomes the center line of the torso, and then that's the right side of the torso. And then from there he knows, okay, so now I can pull back here which I need to do, right? And you usually need to pull up here for the for that other shoulder. Yeah. get the idea
Come on. So yeah. All right. So that's in a nutshell, me trying to uh, show you why I think some of the best in the world are the best in the world. Because I think they understand the idea. behind the importance of the gesture drawing and they understand that They understand why simplicity is important. They understand the power of the gesture drawing and why it's important to making the body look like one fluid uh, unit. And they understand the importance of why those line choices are, are so valuable of, of making the, uh, the body look like that one fluid unit. So from here... Um, I will go, I will go back and start we'll start looking at um poses and do uh some 2 and 5 minute drawings and start looking at how to do gesture drawings and and um what's important about them and 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 what the key elements of uh, gesture drawings are and um, we'll start looking at where you can find good reference photos and um, what to think about when you're doing them. So anyway, um, boy, thanks for uh, watching this and um, we'll get to the real stuff next time. See ya.